to an early in the week Facebook Live. It's ILS month, and we are running and scrambling and trying to get everything done. So had to make this a little bit earlier. We have plans for tomorrow night. We can't get away, and we missed last week. So I want to make sure we got something in uh, for us for Facebook Live. Uh, you know what I want to talk about tonight, and we won't, we won't take a long time tonight. I see Chuck Coulter's watching. Uh, I'm not sure who else is on there. I'm doing this on my iPhone, and I don't always see all the names, but hi, Chuck. Good to see you on there. Uh, there's Bear Smith. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, we'll say hi to some more of you as we go along. Uh, I just got in last night. Laz Alba and I just got in last night from spending five days down in Mexico, and I, I tell you, we're fit to be tied. It, it was so ex so exciting being there, and uh, God was with us every step of the of the way. Everything went great. I don't think we could, if we could have orchestrated it, I don't think we could have done it any better than, uh, uh, than God just laid it out as happened. Hi, Keith Shannon. Hi, Stephen Smith. Good to see you guys on here. Uh, most of you are going to have to see this, uh, uh, see the rerun of this tomorrow when you think that Facebook is coming on. But as, as I said, we're, we're trying just to fit everything in before ILS. Let me tell you about the, uh, uh, the Mexico trip because this is you. This wasn't uh, Laz Alba and myself going down to Mexico on vacation. This was this was you. You made this possible. You're you're uh, paying your dues and the donations you make make us uh, uh, able to do the things that we do in building this ministry and spreading the gospel. So basically, what we did was we left and we went straight to Mexico City. Originally, Laz was just going to go down and patch uh, one of our new members down in the state of Chiapas, which is way down uh, at the very bottom, close to Guatemala. And uh, uh, I said, hey, I'll go with you. And he said, that'd be great. I said, yeah, I, I think it's important that we, that we really show our, our new members in Mexico that, that uh, you know, we're excited about them. They're as much a part of this ministry as anybody, and we want to go down there and support them. And if the national president goes down there, you know, that might, that might uh, uh, give them a, a little, little more boost in, the, uh, in, in their, uh, their welcome to the ministry. So uh, since I was going with them, I said, hey, don't we have to lay over in Mexico City before going on to Chiapas? And he said, yeah, we do. I said, well, let's take advantage of that. Uh, for staying there an extra night, we could not only just uh, 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 lay over and have a rest before we go into Chiapas, but I think there's some dealerships there. And sure enough, uh, there were five really nice Harley-Davidson dealerships in Mexico City. Um, the guys down in Tuxla, which is, the, uh, the state is Chiapas. The big town that we flew into is called Tuxla, T-U-X-T-L-A, if you want to look it up on the map. Uh, and then the smaller town that we went to, which is called San Cristobal, I'll tell you about that in a second. But we said, uh, let's, let's the, the folks in, in Tuxla, they took it upon themselves to hire a van and a driver for us in Mexico City. These are your black sheep brothers and sisters. And uh, we were going to have to either take cabs or, or uh, Uber or something to, to get around this city, which is huge. The city is uh, the size of Los Angeles or bigger, spread out more. But they took it upon themselves to hire a driver for us, which we just thought was, was awfully generous uh, for them to do that. Now, uh, you have to understand that um, even though uh, Mexico City is, is, is large or larger than, than, than Los Angeles, they don't have any freeways. They've got one or two toll roads that we can uh, that we can take uh, from point A to point B. But I would say that, I would say that ninety percent of what we did was on side streets. So for those of you that are familiar with Los Angeles, just just imagine that you're you're going to go to Long Beach to see a uh, uh, to, to to meet to meet a dealership, and then you have to go up to Long, uh, go up to Santa Barbara, and then you have to come down to Orange County, then you got to go over to Riverside, then you got to go down to San Diego. I mean, it was a it was a ten hour day for us to visit those those five dealerships, and we didn't have to wonder where we were or get lost or or anything like that because we had a, a, a chauffeur drive us, and he was a great guy as well. We had a great time with him, and, and he was able to give us a lot of information. But that was the first day we visited we visited five dealerships, and I want to tell you because uh, your mind wonders what the, what what do dealerships look like in Mexico City? Every single one of them was a very nice dealership, very nice, very modern. Uh, they weren't as large as the U.S. some of the U.S. dealerships, but you know they had uh, 10, 20, 25 bikes, new bikes on the floor. Uh, they had all the T-shirts and all the parts and all the trappings that go along with Harley Davidson, and so that was that was really good. Jeremiah, good to see you. Thanks for checking in. 
We're doing Facebook Live a little bit early this week because of ILS coming up, and I'm going to be gone tomorrow night. And I really wanted to give you guys an update on uh, the Mexico trip. But the dealerships were they were all nice. They were all very nice. They were uh, uh, they were newer. Some of them were brand new. Uh, there was one that they call um, uh, the the center or the city center store that was a little bit older. But again, very very nice um, and and all very positive. The, you know, I I've traveled around the country for black sheep. And I've walked into American dealerships where uh, the, the owner or, or, the, or the manager treated me like, like I was an annoyance or, or like I was there to ask him for some money or, or, some, or you know, just, just, it just wasn't very friendly. I, I'm not exaggerating. Laz will, will, will back me on this. Every single dealership we went into uh, was welcoming. They were encouraging. Now, I would say out of the five that did that, there were three that you'd have to say they were actually um, proactive in wanting black sheep to come there. They understood the ministry that we have with uh, with Hog, and, and they said, we need that. Well, we need exactly what you do. So listen, I, I really expect that we're going to see some, some serious international growth in Mexico. Uh, what else can I say? Uh, one, one, of the, one of the places that we went to, uh, the assistant manager was the only person there of authority, and he was a young man, I, I would guess in his late 20s. And after we did the whole spiel on who we are and what we are and what we would uh, uh, do in, uh, hey Bruce, how you doing? Uh, all the stuff that we'd be able to do in their dealership with the, hog, with the black sheep chapter, he actually pulled us aside at the end and said, is there any, any chance you'd, you would pray for my helmet? Which I guess is their version of a bike blessing. Uh, you know. And uh, we, we, we went aside and we, he pulled out his helmet and, and we laid hands on the helmet and we began to pray for him. And he got a little weepy, you know, and uh, that was very touching to us that uh, that he would request that. Gordon Hicks, Bruce, good to see you. Uh, we're doing a little early early uh, Facebook Live here tonight because of ILS schedule. So we uh, we flew into Mexico City and uh, we stayed there two nights. Uh, the first night we just got in in time to get in and get a meal and go to bed. And the next morning we got up and we spent about 10 hours on the road. And uh, as we said, we visited the five dealerships around the Mexico City area. All positive experiences. The next morning, we got on the plane and we went to Tuxla. And uh, let's see who we got. We got Hub. Hub from Texas. How you doing? Lolly, good to see you. Tom Scott, good to see you there. And, you know, all the jokes, all the jokes that, that the Americans, oh, you're going to get on a plane, it's going to have duct tape on the wings. And all like, no, baloney. It, it, the, the planes were nice planes. The people were great people. The food was really good. Um, uh, some of the sweetest, kindest people I've met in the entire world as far as just receiving us as we came, came in. April, good to see you. So we went into Tuxla. Now, Tuxla is a middle-sized town. Um, I can't give you the numbers, but, I mean, it, it felt like a town of, of, of maybe ten or 20,000 people. Uh, but on the main street of that town, which is the highway that you would take going south into Central America, is uh, one of our the man that we went and patched, our new guy, Emilio, he has a he has a bike shop. Uh, he doesn't have any any Harleys. He's not selling bikes, but he's selling helmets and jackets and leathers and and t-shirts and mugs and all kinds of stuff that goes with it. And uh, 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 he is well known because of that shop. Hi, Danny Fo Danny Fox. Good to see you. We're talking about the Mexico trip that we just got back from last night. And uh, everywhere we went, uh, people as we would talk about black sheep, they'd say, "Do you know Emilio?" And they gave his last name, which I can't remember at the moment. But uh, Emilio is very well known in, in Tuxla. Now, if you want to think about... Hey, JD, how you doing? Uh, if you want to think about, um, for you Californians, think of uh, Tuxla uh, as being uh, San Bernardino. And then you would go up the mountain to, uh, to Big Bear. And that's where we spent most of our time. And that was at a, at a place... Uh, called San Cristobal de la Cas la Casas, so House of San Cristobal, and that was the coolest little town. And I'm telling you now about this town, not to tell you about my vacation because it was not a vacation. Uh, I didn't even make it to our prayer meeting this morning. I was so exhausted. We just got in last night, but I want to tell you because this is where all the action took place that we were at. Lisa, Kenneth, JD, good to see you guys. Uh, so we had to drive about uh, 45 minutes up into the mountains. And, and you know what it looked like? It looked like Oregon. Uh, uh, curvy mountain roads, mountains, pine trees, 
a very beautiful place. And that's where we came to the home of Alvaro and Annie Lou. Now, many of you will remember Alvaro and Annie Lou, who have been to ILS twice. And, and we went to their home, uh, which was also uh, where they have a church. They used to have a church there pastored by a man named Freddie, Pastor Freddie. It's a church in the Nazarene. And uh, he moved on. And Annie Lou, this sweet, quiet young woman that was uh, down here at ILS, then became the pastor of this church. And it's a home church. They meet every other week. And you can tell why they meet every other week, because it's a two and a half service, two and a half hour service, followed by about three hours of fellowship. So it's an all day event. And on the off weeks, they have, they have home group meetings. So we met at their church, which, by the way, is called the Lamb's Church, which I thought that was very interesting. And all the way up this mountain road in uh, San Cristobal to their house, there were signs along the way that had the black sheep patch and the name of the church and, and pointed this way to, to go. So uh, we got to the church. We spent the evening together. We set up. Their church is like in a carport, in a very nice carport with rocks on three sides. So it's kind of like a little amphitheater. They had a great worship band. I mean, their worship band would have fit in anywhere, any church here in, uh, in the United States. They did a great job. Uh, they had about 75 or 80 people there. But what's interesting was they had 15 uh, first-time bikers uh, ride in for this event, which to them was, was really exciting that, that they had uh, enough of a concern to be there to come and see what this, this black sheep thing is all about. And they were, they were a club, but they weren't really a hardcore club. They, uh, they were just some nice riders. They were all riding metrics, but they were very respectful, uh, very interested in what we were doing. They stayed for the entire two-and-a-half-hour service. They stayed for the fellowship afterwards. And what's really exciting is that we had a man uh, named Eduardo, uh, tall, good-looking, uh, uh, professional kind of a guy. You know, Hi, Jeff Van Buren. Good to see you. Uh, it, uh, he rode 250 miles. Uh, on Saturday to be with us on Sunday morning because he's been watching Black Sheep. He's been watching Facebook Live. He's been looking at our website. You don't know what this stuff is happening. And it's happening all over the world. People are calling in and making contact with us and saying, hey, I'm interested in this, that, and the other. And he rode 250 miles just for the the, the opportunity to meet uh, Emilio, not, excuse me, not Emilio, to meet, to meet Alvaro and Luna. Uh, um, I'm messing up here. Annie Lou, Alvaro and Annie Lou and their church and to talk to us about Black Sheep. And now he's, he's all tied into the website and he's received all the literature. And I'd be very surprised if we didn't have Eduardo uh, become a member of Black Sheep as well. Hi, Matt Weiser. Good to see you. Nancy, Keith, Don, good to see you. We're talking about the Mexico trip and we're doing it a day early because uh, tomorrow ILS for us here at the office is in full gear and we've got to get going for that. So the church service, um, like I said, it was about two and a half hours long and had great music. And Annie Lou preached a great message. You say, how would you know? Uh, you don't speak Spanish. You know what? You know because you know. Uh, because the Spirit of God was in that place. And Laz Alba told me afterwards, he says, yeah, she, she was right on. She taught the Word of God solidly. And, and the Spirit was on her. And it's really exciting that she would be a part of Black Sheep. So that was, that was really cool. Uh, in that service, we also patched our third member in Mexico, which was Emilio. He's the one who owns the, uh, the little Har uh, Harley shop downtown in, in uh, uh, Tuxla. Albert Robles, how you doing? Good to see you. And uh, it was such, uh, just such a blessing. Uh, that entire church owned that patching service. You know what I mean? They were, they were so proud of their member that was joining and, and by the way Laz Alba they made him play bass with the band and he did a great job he did a super job he was also my translator the, the whole time and of course you know being the jokester that I am uh, Laz says it's the only time he's been a translator where he had to translate his own uh, his own insults <laughs> so as I, as I would make fun of Laz he'd have to you know translate that for me so that was kind of funny Dale per uh, Pearson good to see you uh Let's see. Glad, glad to hear you back. We're in LA to hear our granddaughter singing at the Azusa Pacific. Good, good. So uh, that's what happened. So we went to Mexico City, then we went to Tuxla, then we went to this uh, 
this beautiful little mountain town called San Cristobal. I'll be putting some pictures on uh, Facebook to show you the whole thing. Uh, we, we were never quite sure if our text and our phone calls and our uh, uh, Facebook stuff was getting through because the one thing they didn't have a good handle on was was the internet. The, uh, the connections were always bad. And we wondered sometimes uh, when, when Laz had been calling them before, sometimes we didn't always get an immediate response. Now we know why, because the, the, the connection is really bad. But I want to tell you something, uh, and, and this is going to sound like a commercial, and I don't mean for it to. I want you to I hope that you'll take this as my sincere response. Hey, Jonathan Nielsen, good to see you. Jay Ingley, Grayson, good to see you on there. Kenny, uh, this trip was such an amazing success in so many different ways. If you're just now getting on, in a few minutes, you can go back to the beginning and catch up. But, but Laz and I were humbled by the fact that this trip wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen if we didn't have black sheep back in the country supporting us. Um, uh, we, we got up early, we went to bed late. They were 10 hour days, there was tons of walking. Uh, my calves feel like somebody's been beating on them with a baseball bat. And every minute of, it, minute of it was absolutely pure joy. And uh, we couldn't do it unless we had a team like the Black Sheep Ministry behind us. I, I got the, the greatest feeling since at, at, in this trip that Black Sheep really is going to become an international ministry. I mean, we've had a few members here and a few members there but but these these guys that we met down in southern mexico they grabbed a hold of this ministry there is nothing like this there there's very few evangelicals let alone motorcycle ministries and the few evangelicals that we have down there that uh that are riding motorcycles they saw it they wanted it they grabbed it they were instantly asking information and so we're going to be upping the ante quite a bit on, uh, on Mexico. I think we've got some, some great things uh, to see there. I want to say thank you to Chris Parton. Um, Chris, Chris is out of, I believe, the Pomona chapter, and he picked us up early uh, here in the States and took us to LAX, which many of you know can be a total nightmare, and dropped us off right at the front door, and he was there as soon as we got off the plane to pick us up and bring us back. So Chris, thank you for that. I really appreciate that. The National Board who also kind of sanctioned and got behind this whole thing. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, I cannot say enough uh, to you guys in Black Sheep about Laz Alba. Uh, he was solid gold. He was willing to go down there and do all of this by himself. And I just kind of grabbed a hold of it and said, you know, let me go with you just because, A, I want to see uh, what we're getting into down there, and, B, I hope that my presence as national president would would somehow uh, convey to them how important they were to me, and and uh, uh, that that all happened, and that's true. But it, uh, Laz was great; could not have done it without Laz. Alvaro, Annie Lou, Emilio, uh, you're now on Facebook Live. You're not on here at the moment that I see, but you will be. And so when you watch this, and um, I know that a couple of you can speak fairly good English, uh, you'll be able to hear your name and know that that we really love you uh, and appreciate you. Uh, just before we got on the plane, uh, Alvaro, who's who's very funny, uh, he's kind of the, kind of the leader of the group, uh, but he's not really a jokester. He's I mean he's just kind of a fun guy, but he looked at me with tears in his eyes and he said, "Marty, I love you," in English, and uh, uh, it, there was there was a there was a bond there as much as any black sheep we have across the country. So, black sheep America, you need to understand, uh, you are having an impact in an area that nowhere else in the country is there a group like Black Sheep there. Uh, I'm not aware of any any other Christian ministries. And so, uh, Scott, Tom Scott, you're right. God is good. God is very good. Uh, it's going to change our future a little bit. Um, uh, Laz and I, in talking with them and in looking at the people that were visiting and the people that were asking questions, uh, the the likelihood of two to three, maybe four chapters in Mexico is, is are, are real possibilities. You have to understand we have five dealerships there now that are excited about our wanting to come there. And hi, Teresa, uh, are 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 uh, excited about having black sheep there. And I think that's just going to pop. And uh, so that's that's what's coming in the future. Uh, we're probably going to no, we're certainly going to be appointing somebody to uh, let that be their area of responsibility. And I'll just tell you, I don't think he would mind. He's praying about it, but uh, 
Laz Alba is praying about that. I hope he does it because he has a heart for it. He's seen it. He's been there. And uh, he'll probably be stepping down as our Los Angeles Regional Director and becoming, I don't know what we'll call him, uh, uh, I got in trouble. Um, <laughs> I got I got in trouble for, for referring to him as El Chapo, which I guess that was wasn't a good thing. Sorry, sorry, Les. Uh, but he'll he'll probably become the guy that that, that leads our ministry in uh, in Mexico, and I'm I'm very excited about that. What does that mean? Uh, that means that there's going to be an article every month in the EMAG in Spanish. Uh, that means that there's going to be a section on the website uh, in Spanish. Uh, it means that uh, we'll probably be doing some uh, Facebook Live type things that, that you won't necessarily hear about in Spanish. Uh, we're going to, uh, on purpose, go after Spanish-speaking people. And we think that's not only going to be a help to what's going on in Mexico, but in other, other countries in South America and even in Los Angeles. Um, I'll say it again. Black Sheep has a vision, has a, an international vision and mission to reach hog members and and these guys are all hog members and and just because they're in another country doesn't make them any less important or, or any less viable to the kingdom of god that's that's even silly to say so um uh, i think we're looking at a couple of chapters immediately uh, focusing on some kind of a director who will oversee the whole thing uh including spanish on the emag and the website and the facebook i've already been tweeting in eight or ten different languages a heavily in uh, uh, in her, um, uh, yeah, involved in Spanish-speaking countries. I want to encourage you. Now, listen carefully. Those of you, hey, there's Robert and Yadera, and I know that you guys, you guys speak Spanish. I want to encourage our Spanish-speaking uh, black sheep to, as as this thing develops, to embrace that. Um, it's a big thing to these people that that we came down there and were a part of their lives for five days. They they they, they um, they really treated us with great honor, not because of who we were, but because of what Black Sheep was. And we can keep that going if our Spanish-speaking Black Sheep in America, once you get their emails and their Facebooks and stuff, that you'll just start staying in touch with them, sending them pictures, letting them see uh, what's going on in this ministry. Let me give you an example. Uh, when we were talking with... Um, uh, when we were talking with Emilio, the guy who has the bike shop, he was he has a lot of guys that come into his shop and, and say hi and stuff and have a cup of coffee, but he hasn't really caught on yet uh, to a lot of the things that we, we do up here that work as far as contacting um, uh, you know bikers and making con you know, making communication with them. And we began to explain to him just the simple idea of a bike night. Yeah, you, know, you get some food and you put out some music and you give away a little prize for the best bike. and I think That was brand new to him. He'd never heard of that. And he was so excited about it. And if we are sending him pictures and stories and emails and stuff about what's going on in America, it will, it will help them to discover ways that will communicate the gospel with the folks down there. And obviously not everything that we do will work down there, but I think a lot of it will. And so I'm asking that our members in the next few weeks and months to come as our Spanish director begins to really uh, take a hold of this opportunity in Mexico, that you'd be a part of that. If you speak Spanish, you know, uh, uh, just just send them a hello, just send them a blessing, uh, send them a picture of what you're doing. Let them feel like they're a part of this uh, uh, this thing called Black Sheep Harley Davidson's for Christ. And then there's something else you can do that Laz and I talked about that I think is really exciting. You know, in 19... 19. In 2009, 21 black sheep went to uh, Australia and kind of kicked off the ministry there. And um, that ended up being a little more vacation-y than we had wanted it to be. Uh, we're thinking that next year we'd like to put together a trip, uh, a limited size of group, uh, maybe, maybe 15, maybe 20 people who would like to go to Mexico. Uh, fly into uh, Mexico City, uh, do the tour, hit the five the by, by tour. For those of you who are just checking in, I mean the the tour of the five dealerships. Uh, they 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 just love seeing Americans come in and and be able to love on them and bring them small gifts. And uh, by the way, 
the only place that I've been where the where you walk in the front door of the dealership and there's two people standing there with loaded shotguns. That was kind of that was, that's because they saw last coming. But uh, um, uh, you know, go go to Mexico City, spend a day, hit those five dealerships, uh, uh, make that presence for Black Sheep, and then go on down to Chiapas and then up to uh, uh, Cristobal to to uh, to visit the the Black Sheep there. And to, probably not to ride because boy, that's ooh, that's a scary place to ride. That's a scary place to drive. It was it was a white knuckler everywhere we went. But think about that. Be praying about that. Would you want to go in 2019 to Mexico with a group and uh, uh, be a part of that? Hi, Don. How you doing, brother? Um, uh, and they're and they're so close to the Central American border that uh, Nicaragua is just right around the corner and. And uh, we, I, I think God's going to do some crazy cool stuff in 2019. Uh, that's about all I can tell you about the trip. There'll be an article about it in the uh, in the EMAG. Uh, as I said, be looking for some some Spanish uh, articles in the EMAG and on and on Facebook and stuff uh, from Laz and for some others. We'll also be taking some stuff up from our members there. I've asked them. I said, write write me something that I can put in uh, in our publications that would uh, represent you. Be looking on Facebook. I'll, I'll be putting some pictures out so you can get the flavor of what happened. Uh, when you see the house, that's the house, but it's also the church. Um, and when you see the people, the big crowd of bikers, those are all bikers that came up to visit us. And then you'll be looking for three names. Uh, you'll you'll see Alvaro and his wife, Annie Lou. They're the two that started the chapter there. And then you'll be seeing, uh, of, of course, you'll be seeing... Um, Emilio uh, and and his daughter and and the work that they're doing they're very very good. Let me let me close tonight by uh, telling you that uh, everything's coming together for ILS. We had a, a meeting this morning. I got in last night. Got in this morning. We still had our had our last staff meeting before ILS, and uh, everything is coming together. Some of us are leaving on Monday for San Jose. Some of us are uh, leaving on Tuesday. Vicky's going to send out a reminder that the mixer, which was going to be at the church, has been changed to Five Guys Burgers, which is, uh, I think it's about two miles from the church. And it's not that we're going to just be at Five Guys. There's there's four or five restaurants that are right there. Uh, you know, there's a Subway, and there's a Chinese restaurant, and there's a sandwich shop, and there's Five Guys Burgers, and, and it's all around this big parking lot. And that's where we're going to meet. You can do some early registration there if you haven't registered yet. Uh, but that uh, another another map to that will be coming tomorrow, uh, and I would encourage you guys if you haven't if you haven't registered to please register. We still have key players uh, at ILS that haven't registered. You know, you say you're going to be there, and we're kind of wondering are these guys going to be there? So uh, help uh, help uh, Vicky sleep better at night if you would please, and <laughs> just go ahead and register. Uh, the speakers we've met with them this last week, and uh, I think we have a good team coming. The worship team's going to be good. And this will be the last ILS for two years. Uh, remember, this did, did we have this year in, uh, in San Jose. And then next year, we're going to be having four or five uh, rallies, smaller rallies around the country. And you won't have another ILS until 2020. So I hope you'll be there. Steve Allman, Kerry Scossett, Waldo, how you doing, guys? Uh, don't forget that we have a lot of people. You've seen the, you've seen the prayer requests. We have a lot of people in the ministry who are either, either sick or injured. Uh, don't forget to, to keep Manny in your prayers, our president from Denver, who uh, had a blood clot, which led to a stroke, which led to being paralyzed. And, and the word that I'm getting is as I'm coming out of, um, as I'm coming out of my, my, my jet lag from Mexico, that he's doing much better. But please keep him in your prayers. And I, that's all I've got for tonight. I just wanted to touch bases with you because I knew I wouldn't have a chance to tomorrow night. And then the next thing would be on our way to ILS.